I'm praying that you will see yourself as a worker in the harvest field of God, that you will turn up every day on assignment from God saying, I'm putting my hand to the plow. I am salt and I am light and I am going to allow God to use me. I absolutely love the book of Proverbs. I truly do. It's so full of wisdom. And you know what? If we actually apply the principles of Proverbs into our lives, I believe that we will flourish and thrive in life. And that is the will of God for our life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundant. You know, I wonder if anyone out there besides me has noticed that the world seems to have lost its ever loving mind. I mean, just when I think that things can't get any more weird, you wake up, listen to the news and you go, the world's lost its mind. There is such a lack of wisdom out there. And every single one of us, me included, could use some more wisdom to make better choices and to live more fruitful and flourishing lives. Now in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it reminds us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. So it's by having a healthy understanding of who God is and who we are and incidentally, who we are not. That there, that's the start of wisdom. You see, there's lots of information and knowledge out there on the internet. In fact, more We've got more access to information and knowledge than any other human beings have ever had in the history of humanity. But in reality, even though we've got a lot of knowledge and a lot of information, there is so little wisdom. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 to 10, we see that Solomon made the best decision when God offered to give him anything. God said, you can have whatever. And that night, God appeared to Solomon. This is what he said to him. He said, ask, what should I give you? And Solomon said to God, you have shown great and faithful love to my father, David, and you have made me king in his place. Lord God, let your promise to my father, David, now come true. For you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Now grant me wisdom, and knowledge so that I may lead these people for who can judge this great people of yours. So Solomon chose wisdom above riches. He chose wisdom above position. He chose wisdom above any title. And can I just say that was the best possible choice. While he led with wisdom, he had a blessed life. It was actually when Solomon started exercising a lack of wisdom that his life unraveled. You see, the purpose of Proverbs is to give us skills to live well in God's world. It's important to remember that Proverbs, they're not promises or formulas for success. But what Proverbs do is they focus on general principles that if followed, often lead to a life of success and peace instead of ruin and shame. So today, we're going to dive into Proverbs chapter 6. And every one of us are about to become antologists. You're like, what is an antologist? Stick with me because you're about to find out. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 11, we read, Go to the ant, you slacker. Observe its ways and become wise. Without a leader, administrator or ruler, it prepares its provisions in summer. It gathers its food during harvest. How long will you stay in bed, you slacker? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to rest and your poverty will come like a robber, your need like a bandit. Well, I guarantee you that you didn't think we were going to study ants when you tuned into the show today. And who knew that Solomon was a myrmecologist? Now, I had to look up that word, but mimicology is the study of ants. And actually, for the nerds out there, it's a vast branch of entomology, which is the study of insects. Okay, science lesson is over. Back to some theology. We're about to discover that Solomon uses ants to teach us about work. So today, we're going to discuss how work is actually a gift from God. 
Work is important to God and can I suggest it should be important to you and me. Now, before we do a deep dive into the text, I need us to start at the very beginning. You see, as the Bible opens, the very first thing we see is that God is working and that God created everything. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, we read, On the seventh day, God had completed His work that He had done. And He rested on the seventh day from all His work that He had done. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. For on it, He rested from all His work of creation. We see the word work three times in two verses. Can I just say God obviously does not have an aversion to work? We read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, that we are made in the very image of God. And therefore work is a part of us being created in the image of God. Since God works and we're created in the image of God, we also work. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, we see that the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. So what I want you to notice here is that God put Adam and Eve in the garden to take care of it and to work it before the fall in chapter 3. So I want you to see that. Work was there in the Scriptures before the fall. It was not a result of the fall. So work is not something that we have to do because sin entered the world. Work is part of the goodness of God's original design for us as human beings. Our work matters to God and reflecting His image through work shines God's glory and grace in our world. Now, I come from a Greek immigrant family. Can I just tell you, we immigrants tend to certainly have a very strong work ethic. In fact, as Lafayette said in the musical Hamilton, immigrants, we get the job done. In my life, I've worked in a donut shop, in a cafe, in the abattoirs, that's when I became a vegetarian for a while, in a shipping company, in a youth centre. My husband and I founded A21. We founded Propel Women, Equip and Empower Ministries. My parents, let's just say, took the US Marine slogan seriously. They say, no one drowned in sweat. Now, it's interesting to me that when I visit Greece, which is often, in, in Greece is in the middle of a recession, I see so many unfinished construction projects. It's also really hard to get people to turn up to work, even though there's all of these projects that need to finish. Now, although lots of people have no jobs and Greece has record unemployment rates, people won't take the labouring jobs. They don't want to start early in the morning. They don't want to finish late at night. They don't want to work in the heat of the day. They don't want to work in the rain. They don't want to lift things. They don't want to be told what to do. They find the work too tiring or too tedious or too hard. They want to have a siesta all the time. Basically, they would prefer to sit in a cafe and not work. There's plenty of work to be done, but people don't want to work. Well, the truth is, even Jesus Christ himself had trouble getting people to work. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38, it says this, Then Jesus went to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were weary and worn out like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Now, did you notice that he said the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few? There were lots of people to reach, but few were willing to do the work of reaching people. It's important to understand that no matter what our vocation is, as Jesus followers, we're all workers in God's harvest field. So, so let's go back to Solomon, okay? Don't switch me off yet. Solomon, the mimicologist. We're going to find out what the ants have got to teach us about works. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, we read, Go to the ant, you slacker. Observe its ways and become wise. Without leader, administrator or ruler, it prepares its provisions in summer. It gathers its food during harvest. Now, look, I have to admit, I would never have thought to go to an ant and observe its ways 
in order to become wise. See, Solomon says we need to learn wisdom from the ants. As I studied ants in preparation for this message, I've got to tell you, ants are actually amazing creatures. Go ants. Ants are highly organized and they're efficient insects that work together as a colony to ensure the survival of their species. So they've got a complex social structure with the division of labor and overlapping generations. They're also known for their ability to work together and accomplish tasks that would be impossible for an individual ant to accomplish by itself. Ants are selfless, they look out for each other. Ants are synchronous, they work in tandem with others. Ants are skillful, each ant has a specific skill set and they use it. Now imagine if we as the body of Christ worldwide decided that we would be like the ants, that we would work together and not against each other, that we would support each other and not compete with one another or compare with each other, that we would all take our place and do our part as co-laborers in the harvest field. I mean, we would have revival. After all, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. No wonder Solomon told his son to go to the ant to become wise. We must be committed to working for the glory of God. As Elizabeth Elliot wrote in Discipline, The Glad Surrender, she wrote, work is a blessing. God has so arranged the world that work is necessary and He gives us hands and strength to do it. The enjoyment of leisure would be nothing if we had only leisure. It is the joy of work well done that enables us to enjoy rest. And I believe that it's the will of God that the people of God make the mission of God our first priority. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You and I are here on earth on purpose for a purpose. You and I are salt and light on this earth. And in order to get the job done, work is involved. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labour is not in vain. We're living in times where there almost seems to be an aversion to work. I want to inspire you and I want to encourage you to make a decision that you are going to do what it takes to step up and into the purpose of God for your life. To not just kind of lay back and think, well, whatever will be, will be. But that you will put your hand to the plough and you will be about the Father's business and you will say, you know what? Work brings glory to God and I'm going to make every minute of my life on this earth count. Jesus said, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. And that's my greatest prayer for you this year. I am praying to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. And that means whatever your vocation is, whether you work in a factory, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're involved in, involved in technology or science or the arts or education, whether you're a student, whether you're an elementary school teacher, whether you're a full-time homemaker, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you have children or you don't have children, whatever sphere of life you're in, I'm praying that you will see yourself as a worker in the harvest field of God, that you will turn up every day on assignment from God saying, I'm putting my hand to the plow. I am salt and I am light and I am going to allow God to use me in the harvest field for His glory. You and I were created to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's make a decision that we're going to go to work to make Jesus' last commandment our first priority in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.